Well, you have the outright uh, denial. Uh, no, before that, before you have denial, you have uh, another safer technique, which is simply to kill by silence. You just don't mention certain facts. Uh, for example, in the Battle of Talikota, which ended the Vijayanagar Empire, 1565, uh, the Vijayanagar Empire had a very multicultural, or as you call it, secular army, with two divisions of Muslims, fighting against a coalition of Muslims on the other side. Now, when the battle went in the into, in, in favor of the Vijayanagar army, these two um, Muslim commanders remembered their religion. So you see, they were playing the secular game up to a point. But when it got really serious, they defected, they went over to the other side, and the Muslim coalition won and destroyed Vijayanagar. So, you see, in, in very many textbooks, this is never mentioned. In a few, this is, of course, explained away. You see, that is then another technique. So, you have silence, as most common. You know, just pay as little attention as possible to this record. And that's what the secularists do all the time. And, in fact, um, the whole amusement industry and so on is geared to that. You know, keep Hindus busy with other issues, you know, so that they don't study this. Then you have outright denial. Then you have um, minimization. Uh, a, a classic case, for instance, is uh, uh, Richard Eaton, an American Islamologist who calls himself a Marxist. It's not me, you know, inventing this. He himself says so. And so he defends Islam, and he tries to minimize the number of temples that Muslim rulers have destroyed. Um, so, you know, he says it's a small number, which the secularists, uh, secular journalists, commentators, translate as 80 temples. So this, this is a number bandied about, I've seen it regularly, uh, you know, in, in all of Muslim history in India, 80 Hindu temples were destroyed. Now, even this is not what Eton says. Eton lists 80 cases, but you should study these 80 cases. For instance, he says that um, uh, one case is that the troops of uh, Mohammed Ghori or his successor uh, Aibak, Kutubuddin Aibak, destroyed a thousand temples in Varanasi. So one may really mean a thousand. Um, so it's quite a few, but at least, you see, it is considerably less than what really happened. You see, they're bandy about some figure that minimizes the real figure. And then what can also be done is to whitewash. You should say, okay, the facts happened, but uh, they happened for a good reason. Like, you see, the communists used to do about Stalin. Okay, Stalin massacred many people, but the class enemies had to be destroyed. You know, maybe if he had had water cannon instead of bullets, you know, he could have done it another way, but he had to murder them, unfortunately. Um, so this is, this is applied here also. Um, you know, because Brahmin conspiracy, for instance. Uh, like they say, for example, uh, Aurangzeb destroyed all the temples in Varanasi because there was a Brahmin conspiracy. You see, one of the Mughal princesses had been abducted by Brahmins and was hidden away in a temple, and so that's why the temples had to be destroyed. You know, that's a good story. In fact, I've analyzed and found the, true, the truth about that story. Um, but it was, it was said by uh, Sita Ramaya, a, uh, an assistant of Mahatma Gandhi, a politician favored also by Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, you know, I mean, it may have been said in good faith. You see, some, some mullah or something said that to him, uh, you know, over a cup of tea sometime, not really very seriously. And he believed it, he lapped it up. And then in some other discussion where he could use this example, he brought this up and 
probably in good faith. You see, because of course, you know, Hindus have a way of, of inventing conspiracies, of seeing conspiracies everywhere. Now, in the case of negationism, you see a few of the early communists, Jawaharlal Nehru and so on, knew what they were doing and were deliberately lying. But you see, after that, you see, many people have lapped up these lies and didn't know better. There was also nobody else to speak against those lies. And so they started interiorizing this view of history and in good faith repeating this story. You know, that is very common. And I, I see it a lot in the youth nowadays that has brought, been brought up on these, uh, you know, Marxist-designed textbooks. And so they don't know any better than that, um, you know, uh, uh, Akbar had a love affair with a Rajput princess and so on. I mean, that it was all hunky-dory. Um, so they don't know any better. In that, in that sense, you see, real historians still have a long way to go to counter-negationism. So let's do that.